who is Christ? It's a very important question to ask because who you say Christ is um, really will potentially affect your eternal destiny. You need to know who this one is. And we've been starting by looking in the Old Testament at how it defined him, that he would be the one anointed by the Spirit and anointed to be by God to be Israel's king. We come to the New Testament, and what we started noticing yesterday was that what is said about him in the Old Testament is being uh, repeated in the New Testament, that it's consistent with that. And we put in today in the book of Luke, chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 30, uh, Mary, uh, many of you know he Mary is the, the mother of Jesus, um, she's at this point, she's, she's not married. She, we do find out uh, in Matthew that she is engaged to a man by the name of Joseph, um, but uh, she's uh, still a virgin at this point, has not had any uh, relations with him or with any other men. And it says an angel comes to her and the angel says in verse 30, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor or grace with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb, give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Jesus is a New Testament or a Greek pronunciation of the Old Testament name Joshua. We have Joshua over there, or Yeshua, which was a combination of two words, Yah, uh, short for Yahweh, and and, uh, Shawah, uh, to, or Yasha, excuse me, to save. So it's Yeshua, Jehovah, Yah saves, is what we have. And so then this is simply just the, the Greek pronunciation of that old word, or that old name, excuse me. He will be great, and we called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Now Mary was a descendant of the family of David through Nathan, Joseph was a descendant of the family through David's other son, Solomon. This the line that eventually ended up coming under a curse under Jeconiah that none of his descendants would ever sit on the throne. But that wasn't true of Nathan. And so this is the line that that, uh, Mary descends from, both part of the family of David, and then being the family that Jesus is that line of David that Jesus is going to descend from. And it says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. Why is he reigning? Because he's the anointed Messiah. He's going to be the king. The house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. This comes right out of the book of Daniel uh, in chapter 2 where there is a vision. And uh, you see uh, this image and this image of a man Um, represents a number of uh, Gentile or nation kingdoms through history, but there's a kingdom at the end that is not formed by men. It does not derive from men. It derives of its own, and God is the one that puts his kingdom together. And this kingdom comes out and destroys all these other kingdoms. And then of it, that kingdom, there's no end. And so that is the kingdom that is Christ's. Uh, Some of us refer to a a stretch of that kingdom as the millennial kingdom, but the millennium is only a a one portion of his kingdom. His kingdom doesn't end with the thousand years. It continues on. So this Mary receives this this prophecy, this revelation from this angel that comes and appears to her. Fast forward, and when Mary's cousin, and if you ever stopped and thought about this, Mary's cousin Elizabeth, her husband, uh, Zechariah, is a priest. So he's from the tribe of Levi, Levi, descended from the family of Aaron. But he's married to a woman of Judah. That would be uh, then Mary's uh, cousin, because Mary is out of the tribe of Judah, not out of the tribe of Levi. And Zechariah and Elizabeth have a child by the name, we know him as John, and he becomes known as John the Baptist. And uh, I'm not going to go through and tell you all the story about Zechariah, but when he, when his tongue is loose, when he can speak again uh, at the, the circumcision and the presentation of John, in the midst of this, he says in verse 70, just as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, talking about God speaking by his holy prophets from ancient times, he's promised salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. 
to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, would serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. So that's what this one is going to be, the one he's referring to, the one that we end up knowing uh, as the, the Messiah, the, the Christ, the anointed king. And you, child, now this is Zachariah's reference to his own son, his, his, his eight-day-old uh, baby, uh, baby boy John, you child shall be called prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord and prepare his way. And when they say Lord, they all know what this means. I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, if you've never heard this before, but the Jews had quit pronouncing God's name. So we pronounce it today that one time people pronounced it Jehovah, and most modern scholars say, no, they didn't have a just sound, it's yeah, so they've changed it over and we end up having Yahweh, uh, uh, but there's variations on how this is, not everybody's absolutely agreed on this, although most scholars all say Yahweh. Uh, there's no reason for us to fight and argue, we don't know exactly how it's pronounced. But the Jews had quit pronouncing that name quite some time before the time of Christ, so that they had substituted these little vowel pointings under the word from the name Adonai, which meant Lord or Master. And so when this came over and was translated in the New Testament, they took that name Yahweh and they pronounced it as Lord, even though it doesn't mean Lord. It literally meant the one who exists. Every time they would have said his name, they would be reminding themselves, he's not a God from over there or a God from over there or a God who was. It's always he is the one who is, the one who exists. And, uh, but that's, that had all changed, and they just pronounced him as Lord, and they would have understood this then when, when uh, Zachariah says this. Not that they all go, oh, hey, you know, but that would have been the meaning behind this. So here what happens with this prophecy to Mary and then what uh, Zechariah prophesies, both are still in keeping with the fact that this Jesus was going to be this anointed king of Israel, anointed with the Spirit uh, by God. Now, if we move forward to the birth of Jesus, and we're going to skip over the birth narrative in the first verses of Luke 2, but it says in verse 8, In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock at night. Angel Lord suddenly stood near them. The glory of the Lord shone around him, and they were ter terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now, when they would have heard Savior... And I think Zechariah's prophecy over there in, in Luke 1 that we just got done looking at would have understood Savior this way, that he was coming to save them not from sins, although that is going to happen. Uh, we saw that in our studies in uh, uh, Isaiah 53 and, and other passages. But they would have understood Savior to uh, basically uh, crush the Romans. That's what they were looking for at that time. Savior from their enemies, and by enemies they meant other nations. But the Savior who is Christ the Lord, or the Anointed One, the Anointed King of Israel, who is also the Lord. See, they didn't have a problem with saying this. Christ, this is either the angels saying this to them. He's the Anointed One, the Anointed King, who is at the same time Lord meaning that he was Yahweh. Did these shepherds understand all what this meant? I don't know. They do get up and they do go into the, to the village uh, to see all that this had happened. But all of this is, I think, very important for you and I to grasp that, that, that Zechariah knew some of this, although Zechariah is filled by the Spirit, so he's speaking by, by the power of the Spirit to say things that maybe he himself had not actually put together at that point. Mary probably had some understanding of what was expected, but the angel is the one that clearly makes this known. And these shepherds apparently had some expect expectation. They'd probably heard stories about, oh yes, we're waiting for this Messiah, but maybe they were like some of the Jews that John baptized that were like, eh, is he going to come or not? I don't know. It just kind of sounds like a good story, you know. But now they're confronted with the fact, no, 
he is real and he's here and he's a baby in this city right now and they pack in to go in there and actually see this baby is going to become the king of Israel the one that's going to be anointed by God for that very purpose Jesus the Christ Christ the Lord all of this to help us understand a little bit more that this one this one who is the anointed king of Israel came in time just as God had promised he came into the world to do exactly what God had told Israel he was going to do but he's got one other thing he has to deal with in between and that is he's going to have to deal with the sins of mankind before he can actually deal with any physical enemies and actually take the throne and we were looking at some of those things out of the Old Testament and the New Testament is going to also uh, indicate some of these truths. So, as always, thinking about, appreciating Jesus Christ coming in. You and I aren't Israelis, so he's not our king in this sense. But by coming and being rejected as king by them, he becomes savior for everybody, not just for Israel, but for the entire world. And that is a thing for us to really appreciate about God's plan and God's design to bring him into the world to be a king, but also to provide salvation well, from our own sins. The very things that should have separated us from God, he can bear the penalty of that in our place and then rise again after having died. I trust that that's something that you believe wherever you are today. As always, have a good day in the Lord, the one that is now resurrected. We're going to get to that in our studies too. Uh, and thank you today for joining me.